3D printers can be a little unrefined when it comes to noise. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your printer quiet when it's in action and absolutely silent when it's idle. The concept of this video is simple. We're gonna cover a wide range of methods to make a 3D printer more refined when it comes to volume. This is a topic I've covered partially in the past, but in this video, we're gonna expand things quite a bit because my philosophy on what constitutes quiet has changed. Previously, I always cared about making a 3D printer quiet when it's actually printing, but it's only more recently that I've wanted the printer to be absolutely quiet when sitting idle. And that's because I've been steadily converting my 3D printers to have Wi-Fi connectivity. And I've done this with a combination of Marlin plus Octoprint, Clipper conversion, or converting to a RipRap firmware board. Since I've adopted Super Slicer as my slicer of choice, I've gained the ability to upload to all of these machines and remotely start the print. But that only works if the machine is already turned on and sitting idle. And in that state, I want all of the fans to be completely off making the machine silent as it patiently waits for its turn. We're gonna start with the actual printing and what used to be the noisiest component, the stepper motors. It's rare now, but it wasn't that long ago that new 3D printers sounded like angry robots. That electronic whine comes from the stepper motor drivers. The most common choice was the Allegro A4988, which were quite noisy. But these days, the most popular drivers used we call silent, such as the range from Trinamic, like this very popular TMC2209. <laughs> Fortunately, achieving these benefits is quite straightforward. For some boards, we can buy the drivers we want, plug them in and configure them in the firmware, and I've got a playlist linked below with instructions for the most popular silent drivers, or if your printer doesn't already have it, you can change to a main board with silent drivers already integrated. And I've got a big playlist full of guides for those boards too. In case you're unable to change the electronics on your machine, there is still another old school option in the form of these stepper dampers. They go in between the stepper motor and the frame of the machine, giving a huge reduction in noise. But even with silent stepper motor drivers, a 3D printer can still be very noisy. It's time to talk about quieter fans, and specifically, the strengths and weaknesses of them. The average cooling fan on a 3D printer is 24 volts, with the quality varying and they're not particularly quiet. To cool the electronics enclosure, as well as the hot end heatsink, we generally use axial fans, with my example coming in at around 50 decibels. An effective alternative that I've used extensively are these fans from Noctua, and these are significantly quieter, in my test more than 10 decibels less. Even if we switch to the higher flowing 20mm version, we still save around 5 decibels. The other type of fan that we have are blower fans, typically used for part cooling. They move more air, which means they're louder. Quiet blower fans are harder to find, but Prusa do stock this version that offers a significant reduction in noise. Replace these fans and your printer will be significantly quieter. However, there are some downsides we need to consider. If we look at the specifications for Noctua fans, we'll see that they have a reduced rotational speed and with that a reduced airflow compared to the fans we typically use on 3D printers. If we're using an open shroud, like on the factory Ender 3, we might be risking clogs. However, if your printer uses a shroud that directs the air perfectly onto the heatsink, you shouldn't have any problems. In fact, I had an Ender 3 running with a Noctua fan without a single clog for over two years. For an electronics enclosure fan, if you want to err on the side of caution, just use a thicker Noctua. Our next downside is price, with a 4010 fan being 14 US dollars and the thicker variant being a dollar more. Fortunately, the Prusa blower fan is not quite as expensive. Our final inconvenience comes from the supply voltage, as Noctua fans run on 5 or 12 volts. Plug them straight into your 24 volt mainboard and they won't last very long so we need a solution to power them safely. 
On some main boards, such as Duet and here the Big Tree Tech Octopus, we have our ports for fans, and next to them we have these jumpers. We can move the jumper between 24, 12 and 5 volts, which means to run a knock to a fan, we can simply take out the jumper, move its position to the correct voltage and plug the fan straight in. In most other cases, you're going to need some of these. This is a DC to DC buck converter. Supply voltage goes in, we adjust the output voltage on this trim pot, and then we have terminals for our quiet fan. As it happens, buck converters are the next item on our menu. These are really cheap, we're talking 10 for 17 US dollars. We can use them for fans as well as powering Raspberry Pis. For a fan that's permanently on, or at most switches off to 100% and nothing else, the wiring is incredibly simple. For a permanently running fan, we can take our 24 volts straight from the power supply terminals, connecting our buck converter to that. Some main boards will have spare output terminals with 24 volts, and in these cases, we can run the buck converter straight from the terminal. And if the fan simply switches on and off, we can crimp on a JST connector and plug it into the existing port on the main board. However you do it, make sure you observe the required voltage for your fan, and adjust the trim pot on the buck converter until you hit your target. You can then plug in your lower voltage fan and power it safely, enjoying the reduced noise. You might notice that Noctua fans have a third yellow wire. This is for reporting back RPM. We don't use it with our 3D printer and we can just cut it off. It's really simple and short of reversing the positive and negative wires, it's hard to go wrong. However, not all fans in our 3D printer simply need to turn on or off. For instance, the part cooling fan needs to vary its speed depending on the filament used and the feature being printed. The wiring for this looks a lot more complicated, but there's actually only a single change, with the negative wire of the fan not going to the buck converter, but instead directly back to the negative pin of the main board. And here it is in real life with a 5V Prusa blower fan. The buck converter has a permanent 24V supply, and I've adjusted it to output 5V. For the positive wire, I connect directly from the buck converter to the 5 volt input for the fan, but for the fan's negative wire, it bypasses the buck converter and instead goes directly to the negative pin for the part cooling fan port. We'll put some tape on the center of the fan to help the demonstration and verify that it is a 5 volt quiet fan, and then we can use the LCD to set the fan speed and see that we can set it to 100%, or if we need to, lower this to only 45%, or raise it back up to 75%. We have full speed control of our fan, even through the buck converter. I'm sure technically it's not perfect, but it definitely works. On to making the printer silent when idle, which has become my priority. If you remember the fans for the electronics case, as well as the fan for the hot end heat sink, there's no reason we have to have those on all the time. In fact, we can get them to turn on when the hot end's up to temp, and turn off automatically once the printer cools down, leaving it silent at idle. For some main boards, we'll have enough ports that switch 24 volts with MOSFETs to be able to run the fans this way. If we want to know what ports have MOSFETs, we can check to see if a pin number is assigned. We can see that fan and fan 1 are parallel off the same pin, but this other terminal over here only has constant 24 volts. The solution to switch things on and off is a simple relay, and fortunately these are quite cheap, we're talking around $3 each. Let's examine the connections to know how to wire them up. On the left hand side are our logic pins that connect to the main board, these trigger when the relay is open or closed, and on the right hand side we have our connections for switching on and off the device. Here's how it looks in a little more detail. We have 5 volt ground and then a signal from the main board, and on the other side, we cut one of the wires going to our device and run it through the relay instead. Here I'm using normally open and common, which means when the relay is triggered, the circuit is closed and the component will get power. Let's see this in real life with a fan that's currently powered to be permanently on and therefore not silent when the machine is idle but we're already using the bed, hot end and part cooling fan ports, so we need to use a relay to control this fan. What you're about to see matches this diagram. The positive wire for the fan is interrupted by running through the relay. The circuit is broken with the relay off. The logic side of the relay is going back to the main board and I've plugged it into a NeoPixel port. As this has 5 volts ground and a signal, a servo port is also suitable, as are unused end stop ports because they have the same 3 pins. I've got a thermistor plugged in for the hot end, and I'm now going to heat it up with a hairdryer. As soon as the temperature goes above 50, the cooling fan turns on, 
and as soon as it cools down below 50, the cooling fan turns off. We can also do this for our electronics fan, which is currently not spinning despite the printer being powered up. However, as soon as we move a stepper motor or activate one of the heaters, the fan will turn on automatically, and after the action's finished, it'll turn itself off automatically too. Of course, we can combine a relay with a buck converter if we want to switch noctuas on and off. Let's set up the firmware now and the next steps are the same if we're using a relay or whether we're plugging in a 24 volt fan directly to the main board. We'll start with Marlin and to tie a fan to a hot end, we simply set the pin that's controlling it next to auto fan pin and then we set our temperature that we want the fan to come on at. The electronics fan is even easier. We uncomment, use controller fan and then on the line below, set the pin controlling it. For a prep firmware, we use M950 to declare a fan and then an extended M106 command to tie it to our hot end declared earlier in the config and set our target temperature. Automatic control of an electronics fan isn't natively supported, so the recommendation is to tie a fan to the hot end or bed temp. In Clipper, we make a section called heater fan, we tell it what pin, the name of the heater we're tying it to, and then the temperature that we want the fan to turn on. For a controller fan, we add a section called just this, once again tell it the name of the pin. We can use heater or stepper arguments to tie components to when the fan will turn on, and since I've left stepper out, the default is the fan will come on when any of the steppers are active. And finally I have a timeout of 20 seconds, the fan will turn off this long after any of these components are inactive. Here's a couple of really quick tips to finish off. Some power supplies are much louder than others. Here are two power supplies with the same specs. We can see on the left we have a mean well, and when we turn it on, the ambient noise level is still in the mid-20s. However, for this generic power supply on the right, as soon as we turn it on, the cooling fan comes on no matter what, and our volume jumps to over 50 decibels. Some people may consider opening up the power supply and swapping out the fan for a quieter one. Personally, I'd rather spend more money matching the specs and getting a higher quality power supply where the fan only comes on when it's needed. Here's another scenario with the CR10 Max, with the silent power supply for the main board and steppers, and then this chonkers power supply solely for the bed, and trust me, this thing is loud. You might have noticed earlier that I had a controller fan tied specifically to the heated bed, except instead of going to a fan, it's controlling a relay with the mains wiring to this power supply which means it's only switch on when the bed needs heating. One more tidbit if your printer has excessive vibrations. For this, I just want to point to a great video from CNC Kitchen exploring different methods to dampen your 3D printer and stop noisy vibrations from traveling through your home. Hopefully I've given you enough information to put in place a solution that works for you. If you prefer, I have a guide on using a smart Wi-Fi plug controlled by Octoprint to turn on the printer's power only when you need it. In case you needed any more convincing, I've currently got eight 3D printers sitting behind me, all powered on but silent at idle. So let me know if this interests you. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy refined 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.